Thank you, David, and thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to come talk about uh, some of the new research that we're doing on circadian biology and consequences of disturbing rhythms, there it is, for the cardiovascular system. Okay, so this is just a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to begin with an introduction to myocardial infarctions, which is an area that we're working in right now, or MI, or heart attacks. Talk a little bit about what's known about why circadian rhythms are important for the timing of onset of MI, and then focus a little bit on some of our new research on rhythms and healing after MI. Okay, so by way of introduction, heart disease is a leading cause of death worldwide. About 66,000 Canadians, where I'm from, die from heart disease each year. That's about one person every seven minutes. And the economic burden in terms of direct and indirect costs in Canada is greater than $20.9 billion per year. Probably about a log order greater in magnitude in the US and Europe because there's more people. And MI, or heart attacks leading to heart failure, are the leading cause of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So innovative or new approaches to understanding and treating heart disease are warranted. And what my group does to look at this is sort of like this Venn diagram, we look at the intersection of these three areas. So we study circadian rhythms, how they relate to human health and disease, and specifically how they relate to the cardiovascular system. Okay, so on this slide, I'm going to introduce three factors, and there's lots more, but three factors about why circadian rhythms are relevant to MI. And then on the next slide, I'll put them together and show how they precipitate the morning timing of onset of MI. So the first here is blood pressure. So, does that work? Yeah. So you can see on the y-axis here, this is blood pressure. And this is 24-hour time, so every hour over one day-night cycle. And we have this nice circadian rhythm or cosine wave in our blood pressure, which is lowest when we're sleeping, increases in the day with activity and sympathetic drive, and decreases again at night. Okay, another factor is platelet activity, which you can see on this slide here. So you've got a marker of platelet activation on the Y here. And again, time of day, 24 hours across the top, and this nice circadian rhythm or cosine wave that shows you that platelet activity uh, is greatest during the day and decreases at night. And the third factor are the catecholamines, which act on lots of different body organs. So for example, your epinephrine, which is on the Y. And again, 24 hour time of day across the X. And your catecholamines are, and your epinephrine are up during the day and down at night. So this is sort of how they all fit together to precipitate morning onset of MI or heart attacks. So first thing in the morning you have, in the first uh, row of boxes here, you have this increase in blood pressure. And this is going to cause increased left ventricular stroke work or make the heart work harder, and that's going to have implications for the fracturing or rupturing of plaques in the vessels. Similarly, like you saw on the previous slide, we've got increased platelet activity. So increased platelet aggregability, decreased fibrinolysis, which means that if you're going to get clots early in the morning, they're going to be larger and more aggressive, which again have implications for arterial thrombosis. In the last side there, you see the catecholamines are up first thing in the morning. They're going to act on lots of different things, including your coronary tone. Your blood vessels are going to constrict. The blood pressure is going to go up. And again, that's going to have implications for arterial thrombosis, for essentially having a clot lodge in a small coronary blood vessel. Uh, and they're going to precipitate this morning onset of acute cardiovascular events like MI or heart attack. And this has been shown epidemiologically as well. So myocardial infarction, or MI, occurs when you've got a plaque or a clot blocking a small blood vessel like here, occluding the coronary artery, producing an area of infarct where the heart is damaged. And Mueller's classic 1985 New England Journal Medicine paper shows the timing of onset of this. So on the y-axis, they have infarcts per hour, which is essentially people coming into the emergency wards with a heart attack. And the x-axis is time of day, 
24 hours and just replotted to emphasize this circadian rhythm, showing you that heart attacks are most likely to occur between about 6 a.m. and noon compared to any other time of day or night. Not only do we have rhythms and timing of onset of MI, but we also have rhythms in tolerance to MI. So this is one of my favorite papers from Martin's, uh, Martin Young's group that came out in Circulation Research in 2010, and this was done in mice. And what they've done here is they've plotted uh, on the y-axis infarct, infarct weight per area at risk, and again, time of day. And they've shown in the wild-type mice that you have this circadian rhythm and tolerance to MI. And also, as you spoke about his mice earlier, if he knocks out the clock just in the cardiomyocytes, it entirely ablates this effect, showing that it's driven by the circadian clock mechanism. Okay, and after that paper was produced, a number of people looked at this in the human clinical situation as well, and the specific time varies a little bit depending on what the procedures are uh, that are used, but it recapitulates the same idea, which is that depending on, hello? Depending on what time of day or night you have your heart attack, it's going to vary your tolerance. And we did a study recently which showed, in addition to timing of onset of MI and tolerance to MI, that if you disturb rhythms just in the very first few days after MI, you're going to worsen outcome. And so the main uh, results you can see on this slide here. So we just, this is again in mice, and we disturbed the light-dark cycle. And you can see if you look at the black bars, that if you disrupt rhythms, they produce bigger scars and worse outcomes. Oops. Here. And you can see it visually on the right as well. So these are sections through a sham or a normal mouse heart and then normal MI, and then those that had the rhythms disrupted just for the first few days. And so you can see that there's larger scars and greater dilation of the left ventricle. And this is relevant clinically because our rhythms are disturbed in the first few days after MI in intensive care units because of the frequent patient-staff interactions, the lights being on all the time, and the noise uh, from the machines. And it was actually the subject title of an editorial review on the paper uh, that came out that really drives the message home. So in Science Translational Medicine, where they wrote, how can I recover if you won't let me sleep? OK, so the key take-home message from this part is that our cardiovascular system is remarkably different in the day versus the night. Who we are physiologically in this room this morning is different than who we are physiologically when we're in bed at night. And that includes our healthy cardiovascular physiology, as well as timing and onset of tolerance to heart attacks. And if you disturb rhythms in just the first few days after an MI, it's going to worsen outcome. So more recently, we asked another question, sort of following along this thread. We said, well, if heart attacks that occur at different times of day or night, does the time of day that it happens trigger different responses? And the reason we want to know this is because maybe some of the responses are more protective or beneficial, and some are more detrimental. And if we can identify these, we might be able to come up with new ways to treat uh, heart disease. And so we did a very straightforward study. This is in mice. And we infarcted the animals either right at the very beginning of their sleep period and then looked uh, eight hours later at the responses. Or we infarcted them right at the beginning of their uh, wake period and then monitored the cellular and molecular responses eight hours later. And the answer we found was that, yes, it does trigger different responses that may well contribute to more beneficial or adverse cardiac repair. OK, so time of MI triggers different responses for cardiac repair. We used a classic murine left anterior descending coronary artery ligation model. So essentially, we use a tie and occlude the coronary artery to produce the area of infarct. And these are done in a two-hour time window, either in the first couple of hours after lights on or the first couple of hours after lights off in order to uh, prevent confounding circadian effects. And in lights off, we do most of the work under dim red light so we don't uh, challenge the animals with light. And then the early remodeling responses are looked at eight hours later. So this shows you that initial area at risk and infarct size are not different at one day post MI. Basically, it just says that we tied them all in the same spot. And so they start out exactly the same 
but the results that we see are not the same. Uh, a little bit later, you can see a survivorship curve here, so percent survival on the Y, and the first week post-MI. And so our sham animals, which haven't had a, a heart attack or an infarct, all survive. And then uh, we see some loss, and this is mostly due to cardiac rupture because the scars aren't healing properly. Uh, we see more loss if you're uh, infarcting the animals in the wake time. And then the most amount of loss if we infarct the animals at sleep time. So differences in survivorship coincide with differences in native whole body physiology at wake versus sleep time. So we put the animals in these CLAMS units, comprehensive lab animal monitoring systems, and just look at how their physiology is. And not surprisingly, it's different day and night. And so if you just focus on the black bars here, you can see that the animals take in more food when they're awake. And they're more active when they're awake. Diurnal uh, respiratory exchange ratio is up, and their energy expenditure is up when they're awake which is what you would expect because they're doing different things, whether they're asleep or awake. We also found differences in gene expression in the heart after MI. So Martin touched base on this, but the idea is that in all the heart cells, you've got this circadian clock mechanism cycling, and it takes 24 hours to go through it. And depending where you are on the 24 hours, it's going to shoot off different response genes. And so if you have a heart attack in the morning, you're going to shoot off different response genes than if you have at night. And so we did microarrays to see if that was true, if you had an infarct in sleep time or an infarct in wake time if you get different response genes. And that's exactly what we found. So sleep MI precipitated different genes, some different genes, than wake MI. So we wanted to know what these different genes were, and we did gene ontology analysis, which lets us sort of examine it. And what I really want to uh, focus your attention on is that during sleep time, this yellow uh, piece of the pie here, during sleep time, we triggered a lot more genes that were involved in immune responses than we did during wake time. So since we triggered different genes involved in immune responses, we wanted to know if that played out at the protein level and the physiologic level as well. And so we looked at uh, the serum humoral responses. We looked at some of the cytokines and what their levels were if we uh, infarcted in the day or the night. And you can see some results here. If you look at the white bars, that is sleep time. And so serum interleukin-6 levels are up at sleep time and interleukin-10, and interleukin-4, and TNF. And not only were the cytokine levels up, but these were physiologically relevant levels of cytokines. So we have this thing called a Langendorf apparatus, which Martin talked about too in his lab, where you take the heart out of the animal, and basically you get rid of the systemic effects, and you can just perfuse things through and look at the effects that it has on the heart. So here we perfused through the serum IL-6 levels from the sleep time animals, and we found it had a profound effect on the heart. So this is uh, just control vehicle. And with IL-6, and essentially what it's showing you is that the contractility of the heart slowed down. So these physiologic levels of IL-6 that are being released are sufficient to slow down the beating of the heart after the animal has had a heart attack. And we looked not just at the humoral responses, but at the inflammatory cell responses as well, because we're in this very early time window of eight hours. We're only getting the innate immune response responding, and so we looked first at the neutrophils, which you can see a cartoon sketch of here. And we found that different amounts of neutrophils came into the infarct region depending on whether they were infarcted at sleep versus wake time, and so you can see by the little arrows uh, in the infarct region, there's fewer at sleep versus wake time. And in the peri-infarct, which is a region uh, adjacent to the scar, which has some healing capacity, same sort of idea. And you can see it graphically represented on uh, the right. So if I just focus you on the black bars here, you have greater neutrophil infiltration from the immunohistochemistry in the wake time. And we did this using a different approach, not just immunohistochemistry, but a biochemical assay called myeloperoxidase as well. And we essentially found the same thing, which is greater neutrophil response at wake time. 
Okay, so we found lots of different things, but one of the key ones was, was greater neutrophil response during wake time, and we found, so it's the black bars there, and we found that this correlated with better survivorship, right? Our MI wake animals did better than sleep time. And these particular experiments we'd done over many, many years for a variety of reasons, uh, and lots of different animals, and we felt pretty comfortable with the results. And so we were quite surprised when a paper came out, we submitted it to a journal, and then another paper came out quite recently as well, which talked about lots of different things, but one of the things it talked about was a greater neutrophil response during wake time MI, same as we found, but theirs correlated with worse survivorship. So this just shows you their greater uh, neutrophil response during wake time. And there's the worst survivorship in wake time and better survivorship in uh, sleep time, which is the opposite of what we got. They go sleep wake, we go wake sleep. And not only is it opposite, but look at how much worse our sleep mice do than theirs. And this is not just our lab. We've done this for years in Toronto. This is sort of the gold standard for survivorship in the literature. And it's remarkably different. So we were very puzzled. And this was actually the subject of a lot of media attention recently too. Myocardial infarction, rush hour for neutrophils. And they made clinical claims based on this as well. An MI at this time of day leads to exaggerated inflammation induced by the availability of no more neutrophils in the bloodstream. It has a deleterious effect on the clinical prognosis. And so we were very confused because this is the opposite finding we found it had a beneficial effect. So we read the papers very closely and we found that there was a fundamental difference between the experiments that they had done and those that we had done. And it has to do with biological sex. We use male mice for our experiments and they used female mice, which I have recently learned are called bucks and does. And then we found this paper in a relatively obscure journal called Gender Medicine from 2007 called Augmented Healing Process in Female Mice with Acute MI. So basically they're saying that female mice recover better from MI than male mice. And fortunately they included this very nice survivorship plot. So again, you've got survival on the uh, Y, and then you've got the females in the black bars on the top and the males in the white bars underneath. And importantly, it matches exactly to both of our studies. That's the survivorship that Schloss found when they did the sleep time infarcts in their female mice, and that's the survivorship that we found when we did it in the male mice, as well as other groups that have used male mice. So it turns out we're both right. So time of day of MI affects gene and immune responses crucial for scar formation and outcome. And not only that, it's gender specific. So depending on whether you have your heart attack at sleep or wake time, it's differentially going to affect the genes that are produced. It's going to affect your early inflammatory responses, including your cytokines and your cells, and this can impact uh, ultimately on healing. So in terms of clinical relevance, there is a greater neutrophil response at wake time, but this correlates with protection in the male mice and it's the opposite in the females, which of course has important implications for our research, diagnosis, and treatment of heart disease, including for men versus women. And hopefully that will come out in a few days uh, in the American Journal of Physiology. So big take home picture is, time of day differentially triggers molecular and cellular responses important for remodeling after MI. Considering time of day has clear translational potential and it changes the way we think about medicine. If we look at things as a snapshot in time, it's like a photograph. And if we look at it over 24 hour time, it's more like a video uh, with a lot more depth and moving parts. And it can lead to new approaches for clinical cardiology to benefit the treatment of heart disease. Okay, and thanks to members of my lab, some who were involved in this, collaborators, sources of funding, and if you want to know more about us, you can Google Cardiovascular Research Guelph. Thank you.